Housework and child rearing are the wife's job. Pushing all that onto your husband, you're failing as a wife, said my mother-in-law, unable to accept that her son does household chores in parenting. A little thought should make it clear. Don't forget how your life is being supported, she added, leaving me unable to retort. Remember, it's thanks to your husband that this household runs. Aren't you lacking in gratitude? The other day, I even did the laundry. I'm not just a helper around the house. My husband never showed any sign of defending me. If I said I wanted a divorce, you and our daughter wouldn't manage, understand? I was harshly criticized and looked down upon by my husband and mother-in-law, and I couldn't take it anymore. I'm Katie, a 30-year-old ordinary office worker. I met my husband, Gary, in college, and we started dating. As we both became working adults and reached the appropriate age, marriage seemed like the natural next step. Soon after marrying, our daughter was born, and I changed jobs due to the irregular hours of my previous one. Now I work full-time with less overtime. What I didn't know until after getting married was that my husband had a tendency to be a mama's boy. He always consults his mother when making decisions. When we were looking for a new house, I was surprised he brought his mother along. This apartment is spacious and well-located, easy for shopping. Why not choose this one? What do you think, mom? Is this place good? I wondered why my husband needed his mother's opinion when I was the one asking. The sunlight might be bad here. Perhaps another place would be better, she said, and he agreed. Our decisions as a couple were always overshadowed by her preferences. Eventually, we settled on a place she approved of, which I also liked, but I still felt uneasy. The same happened when choosing furniture and appliances. My mother-in-law always accompanied us. I suggested to my husband that we go alone next time, hoping for some independence and to make decisions as a couple. However, he didn't take the hint, appreciating his mother's presence and advice. This wasn't the only sign of his attachment to her. He often skipped dinner at home, presumably to eat with his mother, which I didn't mind due to my busy schedule. I didn't want to be seen as a nagging wife either. Years into our marriage, with our daughter growing up, we started discussing building a new house. My husband has always been a bit of a mama's boy, but when his mother isn't around, he's a gentle and uncomplaining soul. He's great with our kids, too. I longed for a peaceful new home for just the three of us, my husband, our daughter, and me. So, when he suddenly suggested we live with his mother, I was so opposed to the idea, I got goosebumps. Mom's getting on in years, and I'm worried about her future. How about we live together with her? He proposed. His mother probably wanted to live with her son and grandchild but I was adamantly against living with her. She never listened to my opinions, and I always had to be careful not to offend her. She spoiled my husband and clearly saw me as nothing more than an obstacle. Living together would mean seeing each other every day, something I desperately wanted to avoid. But your mom doesn't want to move far from her current home, right? I counted, knowing she wanted to stay in the area she'd lived in for years. Yeah, she has friends there and doesn't want to move far, he admitted. That area is too far from our workplaces, though. It'd double our commute time. I wanted to live in an area that was convenient for commuting and good for raising kids. Look at this place. It's close to the train station and your mom's house. What do you think? I showed him some options from a real estate agent areas with plenty of parks, nature, and convenient shopping. Although it meant living separately, the proximity where we could quickly visit each other seemed to appeal to him. He agreed with my suggestion. I felt relieved that we wouldn't have to live with my mother-in-law, but that relief was short-lived. She began visiting our house frequently. My husband welcomed her visits, so I couldn't refuse them. Of course, I understood her desire to see her grandchild, but our daughter never warmed up to her and would start crying whenever she saw her. I was worried this would upset my mother-in-law. Even on days off, I couldn't relax when she was around. 
Can't we spend our days off just as a family? I always feel on edge when your mom is here, I suggested. She's my family too. You're the one making it awkward, he replied, offering no sympathy. Every time she came over, she'd criticize my cooking and housekeeping as part of her guidance. She'd nitpick my cleaning, especially when I was planning to do a thorough job over the weekend. It was exhausting being criticized right when I was about to start cleaning, and the meals I worked hard on never so did her taste. You don't have the basics of cooking down. At this rate, you'll never improve, she'd say. I'm sorry, I'd reply meekly. It's true. Your soup is always too salty. My mom's one is always just right, he'd compare. My husband joins in on my mother-in-law's complaints and starts pressing me too. Normally, he doesn't say anything, but when she's around, he suddenly has a lot to say. I was feeling discontented with him. So, I decided to talk to him when my mother-in-law wasn't there. If you have any complaints, I wish you'd tell me directly. There's no need to wait until your mother is here, I said. I can't help it, I remember things when I hear mom talking about them, he replied a bit annoyed. Even if he's pointing out issues without bad intentions, I still want compassion and support in our marriage, but it seems hard for him to understand that. And gradually our fights about my mother-in-law increased. It was around the time our daughter started first grade that I got the news from my mother about my father's declining health. Caring for him alone was too much for her at her age. So, I decided to adjust my work and help out with the care daily. Because of this, my husband was taking care of our daughter more. She was becoming more independent, helping around the house, and understanding of my situation. I was so grateful for her. One day, my mother-in-law came over, furious, accusing me of leaving all the child care to my husband, Gary. I'm sorry, but my father is really unwell, and my mother is old. I really need to be there, I explained. I believe families should help each other in tough times, but my mother-in-law doesn't seem to agree. Housework and child care are a wife's job. Dumping it all on Gary, what are you thinking? If you want to care for your parents, you should still manage everything else. That's the least you can do, she scolded. I couldn't argue back. She couldn't accept her son doing housework and child care. Think about it. How is your life supported? It's all thanks to Gary. Don't forget that and be more grateful, she continued. Despite my own income, she insists it's all my husband's doing. And he didn't defend me once while she was scolding me. The other day, I even had to do the laundry. I'm not just a helper around here, he added. I've been busy with work and care, and there were times I asked for his help. He helped without a word, but apparently, he was harboring resentment. His remarks seemed deliberate, knowing it would escalate his mother's anger. His attitude became even stricter as I continued juggling housework, child care, and care. I do want to do my part with the chores, but sometimes it's just too difficult, and I need your help. Even if you can't take care of our child, at least take care of your own things. Like tidying up after yourself, I pleaded. What are you saying? Protecting the home is a wife's duty. Why should I have to do it? Are you trying to push your chores onto me? He retorted. My pleas for cooperation didn't get through to him. No matter what I said, he wouldn't understand. Stop talking big when you don't even make as much money as I do. If I say I want a divorce and it really happens, you do realize you and our daughter won't be able to live on your own, right? I couldn't deny it. My income had decreased since I changed jobs and was now less than my husband's. With a young child, I chose my job for fewer overtime hours rather than salary. Since then, he has become increasingly unreasonable. If you want to care for them so much, clean the house thoroughly first. He knew full well that it was impossible for me, busy with a full-time job. His demands weren't just about cleaning but meals too. This isn't enough. Don't always settle for stir fries, and I don't want store-bought ready meals. No matter how tired I was from work, skimping on dinner wasn't allowed. 
I was physically and mentally exhausted from having to prepare homemade meals daily. I've lost interest in my husband, no longer asking for anything or taking care of him as much. I can't trust him with our daughter. That's why I started bringing her with me when I visit my parents. My mother adores her granddaughter and is always thrilled to see us. My daughter loves playing with her too. I'm happy when you bring you me, but don't overdo it. You look tired, I'm worried. It's okay, mom, I'm relieved you're here to watch her. My mother is sensitive to my changes and always supportive, making me feel guilty for relying on her so much. Time passed and my father died. My mother and I had to manage many things. We discussed our family's future. It turns out my father was a wealthy man with several properties, including our large, well-maintained family home. You'll continue living here, right, mom? I assumed she would, but she thought differently. This house is too big for me alone. Eventually, she decided to move to a flat, and I would take over the family home. After the funeral, I stayed at the family home with my daughter to sort through his belongings and handle inheritance matters. One day, as my mother took my daughter out, I was left alone, absorbed in my tasks. My mother-in-law and husband suddenly showed up at my parents' house. Why are you here so unexpectedly? What do you want? I heard about it. You've inherited this house, haven't you? She said while lying the mansion greedily, as if sizing it up. With all this space, there's no problem for all of us to live here. What? I couldn't grasp the meaning of her words and exclaimed in surprise. With a malicious smile, my mother-in-law continued, We're moving in today. It's time to re-educate you properly as a daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law? Educate? I was incredulous. It was almost laughable. I stared at them down and declared, me, your daughter-in-law? I'm single, you know. What? What are you talking about? They seem confused by my statement. I've already filed for divorce, so we're strangers now. Unfortunately, there's no daughter-in-law here for you to educate. They were dumbfounded, clearly not expecting me to have actually filed for divorce. How absurd, that's outrageous, she exclaimed. It's neither absurd nor outrageous. Gary himself applied for the petition marriage and summons to the court. She's delusional, a wife defying her husband. My mother-in-law was fuming, her anger escalating. I sent the response back to the court just before my father passed away. My husband had been no help during my father's care and had only made things harder for me. My love for him had long since withered. So, I agreed to the divorce by sending the papers back to the court he'd used as a threat and filed them for real. I had intended to discuss the divorce with him initially, but neither he nor my mother-in-law would listen, and then my father passed away, and the moment was lost. Hearing her barrage of words, my patience finally snapped. Expecting a wife to obey her husband in everything is an outdated notion. I'm neither a housekeeper nor a maid. I didn't care if my mother-in-law hated me anymore. I was no longer her daughter-in-law. How dare you speak like that? Don't get above yourself. She raged and lunged at me. I tried to resist, but she was surprisingly strong. Stop it. Let go. How could you divorce without discussing it? Unbelievable. Such a terrible daughter-in-law trampling on my son whom I raised. Her eyes, bloodshot and furious, glared at me. Come on, do something about your mother. I pleaded with my husband. But he just stood there, motionless, unable to accept the reality of the divorce. Realizing I couldn't handle this alone, I struggled with my mother-in-law as I somehow managed to call the police. Even as officers arrived and I explained the situation, her anger showed no signs of abating. Please calm down, the police officer said, reaching out to my mother-in-law. Stop it. Don't touch me. My mother-in-law reflexively brushed him off, and her hand struck the officer's face, leading to her immediate restraint. Despite this, her agitated state continued, posing a danger, so she was taken to the police station. 
As I watched the police car drive away, I approached my husband, who was standing there dazed. I'll be claiming alimony for the mental anguish you've caused me, I said. Alimony, he asked. Yes. I've recorded everything, I replied. My husband stood there, gaping, seemingly lost without his mother to rely on. Time passed, and one day, my ex-husband appeared at my workplace. Apparently, through a mutual acquaintance from university, bad rumors about him had spread at his work. Talks of a runaway wife, mother-in-law problems, and pity for the wife circulated among colleagues, making him uncomfortable enough to decide to resign. I was shocked to see him. His hair unkempt, a scruffy beard, and an overall unkempt appearance. He'd fallen into gambling due to stress, struggling financially, and given his mother's own gambling habits, his income alone wasn't enough. It's a nuisance you are coming to my workplace, I told him. But you never respond when I contact you, he retorted. I no longer want anything to do with you or your mother, I asserted. Hear me out, please. Can we reduce child support? It's been really tough lately, he pleaded. The amount was agreed upon by both of us. You wanted to do what's best for our child, I reminded him. He clicked his tongue and glared at me in dissatisfaction. Things have changed. My salary is lower, and I hardly get any bonuses, he argued. Yet, if they stopped gambling, they could manage life while paying alimony and child support. But he didn't see it that way and wanted to cut down on child support, lacking a sense of responsibility as a father. Look, Lee, they is tough on a single income. Shouldn't we give it another try? He suggested, proposing remarriage out of financial desperation. I was utterly disgusted. His hypocritical manner of proposing infuriated me. Remarry? No way. I never want anything to do with a mama's boy like you again, I retorted, mama's boy. He reacted, clearly not self-aware. You can't make a single decision without your mom. The house, furniture, appliances, you consulted her for everything, I continued. As I had so much more to say, I cut him off as he tried to defend himself. I know you always go shopping for clothes with your mom and have her pick them out for you. That's generally called being a mama's boy, you know. My ex-husband grunted as if struck by the heart of the matter. He seems to consider himself a devoted son, but to me, he's just a dependent mama's boy. And you, you always used to make fun of my income. Well, that's going to end now. What do you mean? Actually, I'm earning more than you now. What? That's impossible. There's no way you earn more than me. It's true. I got a promotion. Yes, I was recognized for my earnest work at my new job and was on the path to success. My husband refused to accept my words. It makes sense, though, as he always flaunted his high salary and looked down on me. He never imagined his wife, whom he looked down upon, would come to earn more than him. You don't have to believe me, but I can show you the pay stubs any time. My husband fell silent as I spoke confidently. With a substantial income and my inherited father's estate, I can live comfortably without a husband. My days are now pleasantly quiet, free from his domestic demands and his noisy mother. So, if that's the case, give me a share of the inherited house and other properties. I have a right to them. What are you talking about now? I sighed and explained to my ex-husband. Listen, each person's inherited property isn't included in the marital assets. Sorry, but you have no rights to it. Damn it. This is all because you filed for divorce without my consent. I did nothing wrong. My ex-husband seemed to be unwilling to accept the divorce. If you did nothing wrong, why do you think you got divorced? When I was busy with caregiving, did you help at all? You didn't do anything. That's because you didn't manage the household properly. I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Remember I asked for your help. Spouses should support each other when in trouble. My love gradually faded as my ex-husband failed to understand the importance of cooperation and support in a marriage. He couldn't possibly imagine how I felt.
especially when I needed support the most and didn't receive it. It's unfair to expect me to handle all the household chores and child care while we both work. Unfair. Housework and child rearing are the wife's job. You're the problem for trying to involve the husband. My ex-husband, refusing to reflect on his actions, raised his voice in anger. His mindset, likely ingrained from a young age by his mother, seemed unlikely to change no matter what I said. Eventually, he caused a commotion outside my workplace and was removed by security guards. Later on, my ex-husband and mother-in-law became financially strained and had to let go of their family home. They moved into a cheap flat, barely managing to pay alimony and living the life of constant poverty, still unable to quit their gambling habits. Right now, it's just my daughter and me living together. We're enjoying life, with help from my mother when work gets busy. I've become more cheerful and smile more than before, which seems to make my daughter happy, too. In the past, I spent my days constantly worrying about my ex-husband and mother-in-law. But from now on, I intend to move forward, showing my daughter a way of life that's true to myself. From here on out, I'll be raising my daughter alone as a mother. This whole ordeal with my ex-husband has really driven home the importance of the role a parent plays in guiding their child. I vow to firmly instill in my daughter the values of compassion and mutual support, and to face any challenge with a smile.